Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I am back here at Howell Base on Phobos. And this is going to be a continuation of the Learn With Me, where I'm trying to go from Howell Base down to Olympus. And before I get going on this one, I do want to say that I did record a third and fourth Learn With Me in this series. But when I recorded those, I was having one of those days, one of those evenings, where my throat was so dry and throat scratch so scratchy that it was giving me a lot of trouble. So I've decided to go ahead and toss out those videos and just start a new one. But that also means that between video number two and three, which is going to, this one's now going to be the third one, I've gained some additional experience. So some of the things that I tried and failed at in video 3 and 4 uh, we're not actually going to see. But I don't think that's going to be, you know, too much of a concern. Now let's uh, go ahead and get started. What I also want to say is I talked to Dimitri after recording... I think it was video number two, and he was a huge help, as he almost always is, in helping me figure out a, a couple of really good ways to go about getting down from HAL base over to, over to Olympus. Uh, he showed me a method that we could use in IMFD that is probably the best and the simplest, but being that I'm more of a transex person, I wanted to see, I at least wanted to know if there was a way to do it in Transex. And after talking to Dimitri, he showed me uh, something that we can do that works out really well. It probably still isn't as perfectly efficient as IMFD, and maybe I'll make a different video on how to do it with IMFD, but I tend to shy away from IMFD a little bit just because I don't have a lot of experience with it, so when I'm looking at it, I, at this point, don't really know what I'm looking at. The screens are a little foreign, so I just need to sit down and get familiar with it myself before I do any kind of video trying to show other people, you know, this is what you need to do, because I don't even know. Okay. Now, about how based to Phobos. Excuse me, about... How they do Olympus. One of the things I realized after recording video one and two is that it takes two hours to fall from uh, Phobos down to Periapsis at Olympus. And that is some pretty good information to know because we can do some very simple math to help us out there. A day on Mars is 24.5 hours. So if we just simply take 360, actually I should say, yeah, 360, and divide that by 24.5, just put that into a calculator, and you're going to come up with something really close to 15 degrees. So that means in one hour on Mars, the planet Mars is going to rotate 15 degrees in one hour. It's actually like 14.75 or something like that. So that number times two is really close to 30 degrees. So in the two hours that it takes us to fall from Phobos down to Mars is going to be, the planet's going to rotate about 30 degrees. Now, Dimitri actually drew, drew these really good graphics that help explain this better than I ever could. So uh, all credit to him for these graphics. I did not make these. These are his, and I really appreciate that he did this just simply by me, you know, sending him an email and saying, hey, what do you think about this? You know, it just shows the kind of time that he puts into these uh, uh, these emails just for me, you know, just a very helpful guy. Anyway, when we're going to do our burn at, uh, you know, from, basically from Phobos, that's T1, that's time one. We're going to be here. And at that time, 
uh, our periapsis, it's going to bring down the other side of our orbit. So that's going to bring our periapsis down to this point. So we're going to fall from here, kind of following this dashed yellow, or this dashed, because it's more of a cyan color, this dashed line all the way around over to periapsis. And this transfer time is 7,800 seconds, which is two hours. So that's T1. And the time the base location at T1, at time 1, is actually going to be here. So then the opposite side of that would be over here. So we're saying we're going to leave here, periapsis is going to be here for us, and when we do the burn, the base is going to be here. But in the time that it takes us to fall all the way down this arc and come around, the base is going to move from here to here to here so it's going to it's going to rotate you know basically 30 degrees so by the time we actually get to periapsis the base is going to be in front of us and that's what we need because if the base is behind us then either we've got to slow down and turn around and go back which is not good or we would have to go around the whole planet just to get to the base and that's not good either so we need to, we need the base to be in front of us Okay, so that's hopefully pretty simple. Again, we're going to be here when we do the burn. The base is actually going to be here. But by the time we fall all the way around to periapsis, the base is going to cover this distance. You know, according to uh, this graphic, it's going to be 31.68 degrees. Now, there's one other graphic that he made that gives us this same information, but it shows it in a slightly different way and that's this graphic and what we're looking at here again it's the same information the base at T1 at time 1 is going to be here and we're going to be this would be like a, if you were looking at map MFD in fact let me bring up map MFD reference Mars and let's target Phobos so we can see where Phobos is at and let's target Olympus so that graphic out here is is very similar to what you see here in map MFD and you'll see how these uh, correlate in one moment Now, if we were to do the burn on the opposite side of Mars from the base location at that time, then by the time we got over to that point, again, the base will have moved and we'll be out of position. So instead of doing a, the burn 180 degrees opposite from the point where the base is at now, we want to figure out 180 degrees opposite from where the base is going to be. And that's here, that's that 30 degree separation that I was talking about. Now our orbital uh, plane across Mars, this is our initial orbit, this is what it's going to look like, is this blue line. And 180 degrees from the point that we need to do the burn is going to be over here. Because each one of these squares represents 30 degrees. So, you know, this is the 0, 0 position. So that's plus 30 degrees plus another 30 degrees, this would be about 60. And if we go this way, that's minus 30, minus 60, and so on. And, and 6 times 3 is 18, so 6 squares over is 180 degrees. That's periapsis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the burn time. That's that 180 degree on the opposite side. That's when we need to do the burn. And if we combine the retrograde burn with a little bit of plane change then what's going to happen instead of if we just did a straight retrograde burn then we would follow this blue line around and by the time we got to uh, periapsis at this point our orbital plane instead of looking like this green line our orbital plane would be a straight line across and we wouldn't be on target for the base so by doing the retrograde burn here and combining some plane change 
then when we actually start to fall to Mars, we're going to fall according to this green line. So by the time we get over here to Periapsis, we are going to go straight past here and then arrive at the base. Now if this is a little too confusing, don't worry, it's actually very simple in practice. And you'll see exactly how this works right now. Okay, first of all, the base is here, and we're currently on Phobos, so we're right here. We need to do the burn 180 degrees opposite from where the base is going to be when we do the burn. And remember, the burn, the base is gonna, the, the planet's gonna rotate, so the base is essentially going to be here instead of here. So let's count forward six squares from this position. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is where the base, this spot right here, this is where we want to do the retrograde burn, or rather, it, it, this would be 180 degrees opposite. But in order to line up with the base, like we see here, we actually need to do the burn a few degrees before that point. And I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, let's just warp time forward to get into position. I'm got a ways to go here. We're getting pretty close. And let's, let's come out of time warp right here. We want to arrive at periapsis at this point right here. Because the base is going to be here. Instead of here, it's going to be here. And if we arrive at periapsis at that point, then that's going to give us about a thousand kilometers, maybe 1500 between here and here. And if we look at this line, if we arrive at periapsis here, and we combine our retrograde burn and our plane change, then if we're at that point, then our orbital path is going to send us right over top of where the base is going to be. Okay? So that turns out that this, that 180 degrees from this point is right here when Phobos is at about 60 degrees. You can see these numbers counting up. We're at 51 degrees. And as we continue to wait, I can probably zoom in here a little bit on my position. Uh, yeah. Let's zoom in one more time. Take a sip of water. So again, we're on Phobos, and we're slowly moving forward over to this point. And when we get to this point, this is when we're going to want to do our retrograde burn, because that's going to be the opposite side of Mars. Now, we can't do the burn while we're actually sitting here on the landing pad. So what we actually want to do is go forward to maybe 55 degrees like right here, and this will give us enough time to lift up off the landing pad and get a little bit of separation between ourselves and Phobos. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn the APU on, open the hover doors. Um, I'll leave the retro doors closed, I shouldn't need those. So now I'm just gonna add in some hover Turn off external cooling. I'm just going to add in a little bit of hover just to get some separation between me and Phobos. I don't need a lot. In fact, I don't want a lot. Because notice map MFD, it's not tracking my location. It's tracking Phobos. And since now... Gear up. Let me raise the landing gear. And since I'm no longer on Phobos... 
technically this isn't exactly where I'm at anymore, but it's really, really close, so it doesn't, so it doesn't matter, especially since we're only a few degrees away. Let me close the hover doors. And turn off the APU. And let me come back to this view for now because it's easier to see these MFDs. Now we know we're going to do a retrograde burn. So for starters, we can get into the retrograde position. And we're three point, uh, you know, about 3.35 degrees away from when we're going to start our burn. Now we're in the retrograde position. Let's turn that off. And we're going to bring up TransX. And this is something else that Dimitri showed me that I didn't know how to do. And this is a huge help in setting this up. Because remember, in my first video, I was trying to uh, select ships and then target one of the ships on, you know, at the base. And it turns out that just doesn't work out too well. I had some success with it in the second video, but it just, it's not a good method. So here in view setup, we're going to go through the variables and we're going to do something that you almost never do in Transex. And that is we're going to turn auto plan off. And then we're going to come around to the advanced and we're going to turn advanced on. It's very, very seldom that you do this in Transex. Once we do that, it opens up some new options to us that we can use. We're going to change plan type from initial to through point. There's actually a few of these. There's cruise plan, initial, and through point. We want through point. And with through point selected, then when we come over here to plan, we now have slingshot, encounter, and none available to us. And we want encounter. Now, if you don't have through point selected, say you have cruise plan instead, then when you come forward to plan, you have eject, sling direct, and none available. And we, that, those aren't what we want. So it's important that we have plan type as through point. So then we'll come forward, and again, that gives us the plan encounter and the encounter is the one that we need. So now when I press VW to get the encounter, voila, I have all the information that I was in desperate need of the very first time I set out to do this. Because if you recall, the first time I set out to do this, I said there's no way to target the base on, on Olympus, and that's why I was selecting the ships and selecting the Delta Glider instead. But it turns out, thanks to Dimitri, he, you can actually target the base and get all this great information that you need. In order to make sure that you're actually targeting the base and not some arbitrary spot, spot on the planet, what you may want to do is set draw base to no and then come to uh, no base. Now reselect Olympus and then turn draw base on. And that just makes sure that you're actually targeting the Olympus base because sometimes you'll just end up targeting some strange spot on the planet and that's not what you want. Rotation. So now that we have this information we could set up a maneuver, but Dimitri tried it several times, and I tried it several times, and it actually works out better if you don't set up a maneuver here. Instead of setting up a maneuver, we're just going to do the burn when it's the time to do the burn, and we're just going to use what we can see in the encounter view in real time so that we know when our off-plane distance is close to zero and when we've got our minimum altitude down as low as it needs to get. 
and we're very close to that time, so you'll get to see what I'm talking about. Now finally, we're in the retrograde position, but we need to incorporate some plane change. So I'm going to pitch down by maybe 55 degrees. About right there. I'm still trying to work out the best angle to be pitched down at, but this gives us our plane change. So we're we're 180 degrees, we're backwards, so we're getting our retrograde, and now we're pitched down, so that's going to give us our plane change. And as soon as this hits about 60 degrees, we'll start the burn, and you'll see over here in real time exactly what's happening with our plane change and our altitude. And there's probably some small inaccuracy here in this number because, again, since we're no longer on Phobos, then we're doing the burn when Phobos is at 60 degrees as opposed to when we're at 60 degrees. But you can see we're right here by Phobos, so it should be basically exactly the same. Okay, there's 60 degrees. Let's make sure we're perfectly at 180 and we're about 55 degrees this way. So let's full power on the main engines. And you can see the minimum altitude coming down and the off-plane distance coming down. And just so we can see from the outside what's happening, this is how our burn looks. Now we do need to watch our minimum altitude and our off-plane distance and make pitch adjustments as necessary so if we need to, we can even go to maybe half of main engines so things aren't happening so fast. And then make sure rotation's on. And then we just want to make sure that we get the minimum altitude, you know, down to a low number. And we want that to happen at about the same time that we get the off-plane distance you know, close to zero. So we may need to pitch up and down to make some adjustments. <clears throat> but you can see they're coming down at about the same rate. Let's maybe pitch up just a little bit because our off-plane distance is coming down faster. Oops. I think I overshot the altitude. Let me open the retro doors. Yeah, I accidentally brought the minimum altitude down too much. And when you do that, then you lose this information. So you just have to back up a little bit. But now you can see our off-plane distance is 255 meters. That's absolutely nothing. And our minimum altitude is uh, 11 kilometers, which is really nice. Translation. And then we can translate that down a little bit if we want. Maybe get it down to 8.5, like that. Okay, now let me turn off the APU and let me actually close the retro doors. And now, uh, we don't need to have Phobos targeted anymore, so let's go to target no orbit.
And now we can just warp time forward and just kind of watch what's happening as we go forward. There may be some small, you know, variation in the off-plane distance, but if we get down to Mars with an off-plane distance anywhere, you know, even, even if it's off by several kilometers, that's fine because we are going to be going through the atmosphere for a little while. So we're going to have some amount of cross range thanks to the fact that, you know, we're using a winged vessel. Okay, so once we get to a certain point in the orbit, you can see that we now have these orbital lines around Mars, which is really quite helpful. But something else that we have... Rotation. Something else that we have happen in Transex is when you get close to the planet, uh, for whatever reason, it sort of resets and it doesn't have the base targeted anymore. Notice our off-plane distance is gone. So we'll uh, turn draw base to no. And we'll go to no base. Now we go and reselect Olympus again and turn draw base on and now we have our off-plane distance again and that's and we kind of need that because if we're as we're falling toward Mars if we notice that this starts to slip a little bit we may want to just do a bump or two of translation in order to get ourselves back on track but let's go prograde to Mars I just heard my doorbell, but it's just a delivery guy. I don't need to get that. <clears throat> so let's go prograde to Mars and let's continue, you know, falling down toward the planet. And if we bring up Orbit MFD, we can see where we're at. Uh, we've got the ship selected and we've got the distance. You can see our orbit MFD is saying our PEA is going to be 8.4 kilometers and I'm reasonably certain that's accurate. <coughs> and if we don't like this view we can come to um, view setup and I actually prefer graph projection to be set to focus. That gives, I feel like that gives me a more accurate picture of what my orbit is going to look like around Mars whereas maneuver or plan or ecliptic just gives you this tilted view and I don't like that so this focus view is going to work better for this purpose then we'll come back over to encounter and let's just warp time forward and get closer uh, my throat is already bothering me darn it but I think I'll make it. And I think we can go to surface now so we can keep track of uh, how things are coming along. We can see our altitude. And the real, the real key here is obviously we're lined up so we've accomplished that goal. But the last piece of the timing to work out is just to make sure that you hit periapsis when you're just a thousand to maybe fifteen hundred kilometers out. You don't want to get to periapsis when you are still, you know, three thousand kilometers out because you'll just have a really long, you know, relatively speaking, a relatively long glide time. And my goal is to get down to Mars and have as least amount of glide time as possible so I can get to the base really fast. Now this is not fuel efficient uh, when using a winged vessel like the XR2 because you have a lot of cross range and you could just do the retrograde burn and save a lot of DV by not doing the plane change but imagine that you weren't using a winged vessel. Maybe you were using 
something like maybe you're sending a probe down or something like the uh, dragon capsule where you don't have wings and you don't have any cross range so it would be important in that case to have your capsule pass right straight over top the base okay we're getting pretty close to uh, getting down into the atmosphere and we're closing in Let's zoom in a bit And you can see our off-plane distance now is starting to have some effect. What we can do, a couple things. I can do a little bit of gliding. I don't have to immediately go to uh, a high angle of attack. Let me turn on the APU. And turn on surface controls. And since my offlane distance is increasing, I can just actually turn off. RCS off. See which way I need to uh, bank. Okay, looks like banking to the left is going to bring the. Gonna bring the off-plane distance down, but let me go inverted so I don't climb. And now I'm getting pretty close to the point where I would probably want to start the angle of attack. Uh, let's go out a little bit further though. And I'm bringing the off-plane distance down. So let's roll heads up. Warning, hull temperature. And protect a radiator. Ah. Okay, well, that was just stupid. I wasn't paying attention to the radiator, and that was just totally stupid. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and keep this video because everything that I wanted to show with getting lined up with the base, I, I was able to demonstrate. I was just. I, I wasn't actually thinking ahead and planning on doing the actual landing because I was concentrating so much on showing how to get to periapsis and get lined up with the base and I think this video shows that really well so once you actually get down you know into the atmosphere then you just want to uh, do your normal re-entry procedure go to you know, go level with the horizon and then get your audit attitude hold autopilot set up and then when you're ready engage the autopilot that will pitch the vessel up and give you your braking. In fact, let me do this. Because I can do this really fast if I don't have to explain it, Nah, I'll just I'll just do it in another video. I'll go ahead and make this the end of that video. Uh, if you understood, if you like what you saw here, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. But not for my sake. Uh, leave a comment down below and tell Dimitri that he's totally awesome. I mean, the guy really, really is. He's very friendly, and he's been so helpful to me uh, in so many circumstances in the last several months. I, I just can't even begin to tell you how much how much that. 
uh, one person's done. It's just really surprising. So um, all of this that's now understood very well by me uh, wouldn't have been nearly as well understood if I had continued doing the method that I was doing in, you know, in part one and part two where I was trying to target the ship instead of the instead of being able to do the, the do it this way with the encounter this way with the encounter is so much more reliable so I will see you in the next video start a new one but that also means that between video number two and three which is going to this one's now going to be the third one I've gained some additional experience so some of the things that I tried and failed at in video three and four uh, we're not actually going to see but I don't think that's going to be you know too much of a concern now let's uh, go ahead and get started what I also want to say is I talked to Dimitri after recording I think, I think it was video number two and he was a huge help as uh, Phobos down to Periapsis at Olympus. And that is some pretty good information to know because we can do some very simple math to help us out there. A day on Mars is 24.5 hours. So if we just simply take 360, actually I should say, yeah, 360, and divide that by 24.5, just put that into a calculator, and you're going to come up with something really close to 15 degrees. So that means in one hour on Mars, the planet Mars is going to rotate 15 degrees in one hour. It's actually like 14.75 or something like that. So he almost always is in helping me figure out a, a couple of really good ways to go about getting down from base over to over to Olympus uh, he showed me a method that we could use in IMFD that is probably the best and the simplest but being that I'm more of a trans X person I wanted to see I at least wanted to know if there was a way to do it in trans X and after talking to Dimitri he showed me uh, something that we can do that works out really well it probably still isn't as perfectly efficient as IMFD and maybe I'll make a different video on how to do it. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video and in this video I am back here at Howl Base on Phobos and this is going to be a continuation of the Learn With Me where I'm trying to go from Howl Base down to Olympus. And before I get going on this one I do want to say that I did record a third and fourth Learn With Me in this series, but when I recorded those, I was having one of those days, one of those evenings, where my throat was so dry and throat scratch so scratchy that it was giving me a lot of trouble, so I've decided to go ahead and toss out those videos and just with IMFD, but I tend to shy away from IMFD a little bit just because I don't have a lot of experience with it so when I'm looking at it I at this point don't really know what I'm looking at the screens are a little foreign so I just need to sit down and get familiar with it myself before I do any kind of video trying to show other people you know this is what you need to do because I don't even know okay Now, about Hal Base to Phobos, excuse me, about Hal Base to Olympus. One of the things I realized after recording video one and two is that it takes two hours to fall from 